holy cows, I'm good to have that pile out of here. So I've been finding a space for everything finally. And we um, actually have it to a point. Let me turn this thing off. This is one of the podcasts I listen to. Finally to a point where I can see the room is finally opening up. What a difference. But, of course, all the crap I was throwing over here. <laughs> I've got to clean it all up. But that's all right. That's all right. Not much point to this video tonight. Just me moving heavy stuff. Like always, we still have this wall of lumber to get out of here. Um, I did fill another truckload of garbage out of here. Now, you know, I keep saying, oh, I need a lean-to, I need this, I need that. You know, this is a big building. It's not so much that I need a lean-to and need more storage. I need to get my shit together and throw stuff out. I am a pack rat, I am a hoarder, whatever you want to call it. I have a horrible habit of that. And usually the mess I have is a result of that mindset. You know, you get, the, uh, you get guys like me who say, well, that'll be useful for something. So you throw it in a corner and then you're buried. Now, I've been running stuff to the dump left and right. Trying to make it so it's not an embarrassment for somebody to come here and see my mess. Man, there's a lot of shit to clean up. You guys ought to see the bonfire we're going to be having. Uh, once the burn band is lifted. Crap like this, I'm always saving it. All these little sticks, you know, because you got to be able to stick or stack your lumber, and that is one of the hardest things to find when you're sawmilling is stickers. But I can tell you this. With stickers, it's always better to have the same species of wood as what you're stacking. Because when you mix the species up, a lot of times they tend to stain on you. Especially if your stickers are green at all or anything like that. We got lucky with this stuff, it didn't really bother the walnut at all. Wow, what a mess. All right, it is wiggly camera time. So, look at that, guys. The back doors of the barn. We have not seen those in quite a while. Still have a whole lot to clean up. Get you around here. Keep backing up. I really need a wide-angle lens for this thing. So, we've got to get this stuff out of here. I have plans for that. As you can see out there, there's a bunch of stuff that has to leave. Can you guys believe the amount of shit that I had stuck in that little forge area? I can't believe I was able to get anything done, but soon to be fixed. So anyway, I've been thinking of the layout out here in this thing, and right where that gravely is sitting, I think is where we're going to build the forge. It's a little more centralized, and I have definite, I have some plans for the exhaust, things like that. It's going to be a little different, but I think you guys will like what we're doing. Uh, anyway, there's the wall. So that's where we're at right now. We're going to carry that shelf across quite a ways, probably all the way across the top. We've got to put a filler board in right there. So over here, we've already moved the 2x72. 
I'm going to drill through that shell from the wire to the VFD up through there. Next to that we're going to go with our regular bench grinder on its own pedestal. Next to that we're going to go with the buffer. And because it's a sharpening station more in towards the corner we're going to go with the chainsaw grinder. I know that's kind of goofy in there. But over here the metal and stuff on the walls is going to come down. And we're going to start carrying the same design that we have here all the way around the walls of the forge. I think that'll look nice. Kind of give it an old time look if we keep the wood up high. I kind of hate to cover up the timbers in here. Well, as you can see, we're getting there. We're getting a little closer every video. I wasn't going to do a floor sweeping video or a revamp. or You, you guys know what I mean. I wasn't going to do one, but I uh, figured you guys would like to see a little progress update of how it's going and where we're at. I found a good spot to get the black walnut drying. We have another, probably another year and a half before we can really use those slabs to make tables and all that. But um, I know my wife is on the list for a nice live edge black walnut table. So she'll get one. It'll be eight feet long and it'll be a nice one. It'll be good size. But uh, yeah, I, I can't believe it, it's starting to feel like a nice space. Actually, probably for the first time ever. Uh, if you guys watch the timber frame vlog videos, and if you're new here, we have probably close to 300 videos on the building of this barn, this shop. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there for timber frame joinery if you're trying to learn at things like that. You regulars, you guys have already seen them. But that is the timber frame vlog playlist. So if you're interested, we beat to death the how-to on how to do it. But, uh, yeah, I am getting really happy with this. That wall right there behind the camera, that makes all the difference for the mood and the look in here. Having that wood plane down, it just it totally brightened it up. We're going to get some more LED lights hung from the ceiling, try to get some around the perimeter so we don't have any shadows. Um, I have a plan for the forge. I think you guys are really going to like that. I think I'm really going to like it. But I decided to go with a... Uh, a metal insert into a stone forge so it'll it'll be a stone kind of a stone ring there'll be one side open so we can access the blower and everything to it the blower on the forge is a necessary thing and i use an electric blower it's a very annoying sound on the camera but it's not that bad when you're working with it that big exhaust fan we have i was going to run a stack up the side of the building but logistically in this building for me Especially with this leg climbing, it is, well, I tell you what, we had a 28-foot ladder on this thing. It doesn't even reach the peak. It's quite shy of reaching the peak, so that tells you how tall this thing is. I'm not carting my happy ass up past that peak to run a stack up there. I will continue. What we're going to do, I'm going to make a plenum in the ceiling. We're going to do some drops with dampers. So I have a nice big industrial exhaust fan on the side of this building that I showed in a previous video. We're going to run that plenum down to that exhaust fan and we're going to have some offshoots for it. We're going to have a welding hood and we're going to have the forge hood. But what I'm going to have to do when I'm running the forge, I'll have to have a damper in where the uh, welding hood is so I can close that damper off so I make sure we're sucking all of the smoke out of the coal forge. Now, that may sound really goofy to some of you, but it's, like I said, psychologically, I'm just not there yet for getting back up on tall spaces and tall ladders. You take one good ride down, you, pardon my French, but you fuck your body up enough, you really don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to do it again. So you do anything in your power to avoid it. The lifting and the lugging, like you guys see me carting these big heavy slabs out of here, it's actually good for me. Um, my surgeon, when I went back for my final checkup, uh, it's going to be a year ago. What is today's date? You guys believe that tomorrow is two years. It'll be two years tomorrow that I fell off of this thing. Wow, that is crazy. Two years already. So a year ago when I went back for the final checkup, 
The doctor could not believe how well I was healing and how well I was getting around. Because like I said, if you guys, uh, you guys who remember it, I almost lost the leg. They, uh, they didn't think they were going to be able to save it. I got so lucky. But the bone was healing really, really well. I mean, there was chunks missing. There was a lot going on in there. And it actually grew back, and it grew back better than it was before. It's the hardware and stuff that gives me most of the issues now, and the ligaments and tendons and stuff like that. But he asked me what I was doing. And I said, well, I've been finishing off my timber frame. I've been doing this, doing that, lugging on heavy stuff. And he goes, well, whatever you've been doing, keep doing it and don't stop because that's why you're healing so well. Um, obviously, we have to watch it. Always have to watch it. Those slabs are probably about the heaviest thing I feel like carting around. Um, but it's all right. I always feel better after doing it. Usually next day be sore a little bit, but after that, it gets even better. But the big thing I have to watch is hardware. I don't need screws and stuff backing out, so we have to be kind of careful how we put the weight and things like that. It probably won't be too many more years I'll be able to do that th that kind of stuff. But I tell you what, it always makes my body feel better as long as I'm being smart about it. So, anyway, that's our update. That's what we're doing. I am really getting excited now. This is finally starting to... I'm finally starting to get a space in here that's starting to look and feel kind of how I envisioned it the whole time I was building this frame. Uh, like I said, I've been hauling stuff out of here, making runs to the dump. My truck outside, I've got an eight-foot bed in it, and I've got it overflowing with stuff just out of here. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. It doesn't feel like you made a dent, but if I go back and watch some of the videos or look at where we were even a week ago, it's like, holy shit, we're really getting this thing cleaned up. So anyway, that's our little progress update. Our goofy vlog style channel, you know, you, you always get these little progress updates. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one.